So as many of you know, I'm a pretty big fan of Terrifier. So when I heard that Damien Leone was making a horror Christmas movie, I was pretty excited. Who doesn't love a good holiday horror movie? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Burns Views. My name is John here on Burns Views, and today we're taking a look at the new trailer by Damien Leone, Terrifier 3, the naughty cut. So you know it's good. Let's waste no time. Let's get into it. You survived the most famous serial killer since Jack the Ripper. The five year anniversary is coming up. I think a lot of people would really like to hear from you after all this time. So that's interesting. I mean, right, right out of the gate, I love how his little hangout place is kind of reminiscent of the crow, like that window, you know what I'm talking about? That's pretty cool. Um, we're getting flashbacks to Terrifier 2, five years have passed. I'm kind of glad they did do a time jump. It kind of brings us up to the present day. Not to mention some of these actors are getting a little bit older. It's kind of like a Stranger Things situation. Jonathan is like seven foot two. Lauren Levera is like 34 years old. She's playing 18. You got to do a little bit of a jump. I could suspend disbelief. I don't care about their real ages. To me, it's all about the story, but I'm glad they did make that jump. Um, clearly, somebody is coming to uh, our girl Sienna, asking to do tell her side of the story. Uh, which is probably not a great idea, because if we know anything about uh, Dream Demons, is that much like Freddy, much like Pennywise, and much like uh, Art the Clown, they thrive on uh, fame. That's kind of how they stay alive. It's like, you keep their legend alive, Candyman's a good one too. So if you keep their legend alive, they stay alive. So, probably a terrible idea to bring up the story. Um... You know, Scream is another good one. Not that Scream or Ghostface is a supernatural element, but the more you keep the idea of something alive, the more the crazies come out of the woodwork and fuck shit up. Um, they're gonna die because, you know, they tried the fate. Not, not Sienna, but these people who are like, you should tell our story. You should tell your story. We want to know more. We like true crime. All right, let's get into it. I want to know what it's like to be in the presence of that kind of evil. You will. What goes through your brain Ooh. when it's close enough to you? That's spicy. Is that is that Lauren Levera again? I know she was a little naky in the um the second movie, and it was the same. Damien Leone did the same thing where he had like the frosted uh, glass so you can kind of get like an outline. Damn. When it's close enough to you, you feel his breath. No, it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Pause. Pause. My man Art just came through the glass window with a chainsaw like it was nothing. Uh, <laughs> forget Psycho. Psycho was like an old lady with a curtain and a, a kitchen knife. My boy Art came busting through with a chainsaw while, the, while, while this guy, who I imagine is this movie's version of Just the Tip. Oh, man. That, that. <laughs> I'm gonna take a sip on that one. I like what we're doing here. This is very much like Scream 2. We're off to go into Windsor College, and, you know, it's kind of like where uh, Sydney meets up with Randy. It's like, it's happening again. And he's like, lots of things happen at the movies. People get stabbed, robbed. It's a very dangerous place to be. Uh, and Jonathan, like I said, is now seven foot, way taller than Lauren Levera. And um, I, I suspect, hot take, I have a whole theory on this. I got a whole bunch of videos and theories and inside explaining videos. If you want to check it out, as you know, if you have seen this channel, uh, the life and blood of this channel is talking about Terrifier, to be honest. But go check out those videos. They're doing pretty well. People love talking down in the comments. I love hearing about it. I love riffing with you guys. Half the time, your comments inspire me to make more videos because they inspire more theory ideas. It gets the noodle going. Um, but I love this. I love a good, we're going to college. Um, you know, this, anybody who knows me, Scream 2 is actually my favorite in the franchise. A little bit more polished, a little bit more character development than the first one. There's a little bit more unity between the characters, and, um, I dig it. And, hot take, I feel like Jonathan's gonna die. Uh, not just because he's getting too tall, but because, you know, if you follow, I, I had the pleasure of meeting Damien, uh, back at Smod Castle, where he, he showed a double feature of... Uh, one and two of Terrifier, and I had the pleasure of talking to him for like five minutes. And when I talked to him, I'm like, you gotta make 10 of these movies. You gotta put them on the board with Freddy and Jason and Michael. And he's like, no, man, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make four in total. I'm gonna make three, I'm gonna make four, it's gonna be done. And knowing what I know about the franchise, how it very much has a sword and sorcery kind of 
um, blueprint, if you will. I view this franchise as such, where the first movie, Terrifier, is very much the franchise's prologue, right? This is the, the Drew Barrymore getting killed in Scream. This is introducing you to it, the prototype, the beta test. You know, we don't have our main characters yet, but we have our killer, and we're setting the scene. Terrifier 2 is like the first movie, and uh, and so on and so on. Terrifier 3 is kind of like unofficially the second movie. It's your Empire Strikes Back, and I think it's going to end on a dour note, and I think part four is going to be your final chapter. And if you're going to do uh, a middle chapter, which I kind of view this movie as being, how do you do it? You have to end it in such a way where the stakes are down. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the stakes are up, but morale is down. Uh, Sienna is going to have to take a really hard blow. She already lost her mom in the second movie. Who is she going to lose in this one? I think it's going to be Jonathan. I think because it's like he is the voice of reason. I think it's going to end with Jonathan being killed. Um, and I'm, I have a way more in-depth uh, version talking about that. But um, I think he's going to get killed at the end of this movie. And that's going to be the in inspiration for Sienna to dive into the next one. I think this is going to be a to-be-continued. Um, either officially or just kind of in a vague sense of there's one more. And I think the last movie is going to end with, you know, both Art and Sienna dying. I think it's a two sides of the same, co same coin where you have dark and light and you have, um, you know, Batman and Joker and, and you can't have one without the other. I think Jonathan here being the, the wise, the guy in the chair, the guy with the information, the Robin, if you will, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, he's going to have to die to establish real stakes in the narrative. My theory, I'll talk about that more later. Let's keep going. Who is this Santa? He's scaring my kid. Yeah, he's scaring me too. Hey, Santa's handing out presents! <laughs> Come back here. Even if he was alive, which he isn't. When you want to get as far away from here as possible, as far away from you. Okay, so we have a security guard who looks like he's art fodder, and um, it looks like he's either in the tunnels of uh, All Hallows Eve, which was the prequel movie, not a prequel movie, but the the really first appearance of Art the Clown. Uh, it looks like the sewer where they brought the girls, or it kind of looks like the carnival. Um, Fun house from Terrifier 2, it's kind of hard to say. Or it could be a brand new location, but uh, yeah, that guy's not going to make it. And again, we're doing the Jonathan. I love this. I love when the character Jonathan does like a whole exposition drop. He takes out the notebook. He's kind of like, these are these sketches my dad did. It's, it's very much just, I love the idea of um, prophecy and then it kind of comes true. It's kind of like the Matrix, if you will, or Star Wars and all that shit. I love a good... A good fable, if you will. So, let's check it out. Why would he come back here? Even if he was alive, which he isn't. When you want to get as far away from here as possible, as far away from you. We both know this isn't over. I think Jonathan's on his knees in some of these scenes. <laughs> no, he looks taller. There's one shot right there. He looked, They try to make him taller. They put the tripod all the way up. It's like, alright dude, get on your knees. You're going to have to reverse Tom Cruise this bitch. I don't, look, I, I met him too. I have an interview with him, and the audio didn't come out good, so we never released it, but um, I think I'm just going to drop it anyway, because I'll, I'll put subtitles. But um, I met the uh, the kid who plays Jonathan. Nicest guy you'll ever meet in your life. Just just very humble. Uh, he was there with his dad. Also incredibly nice. They were nice enough to give an interview. Um, and yeah, I, I, I hope this kid goes on and does more stuff. I hope he's like horror legacy he just goes on to be like in a scream movie or something bigger or just or even keep it within the uh damien leone family like i hope he's in like stream two or something like that i have to go see stream i think that comes out this weekend um i love indie horror bloody disgusting movies i don't even want these actors to go into bigger and better things because they're not actually better things they're very mediocre i don't love scream six i love terrifier two why would he come back here even if he was alive, which he isn't. When you want to get as far away from here as possible, as far away from you. We both know this isn't over. Oh, as expected, our girl, uh... Oh my god, what is her name? Fuck! The girl, at the, the woman at the end of the movie, um... 
This is gonna bother me. The woman at the end of part two, who's in the post credit scene, who was the final girl in the first movie. She's back. Uh, you remember the one? Like, you know, she's got the glowing eye. Ha 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 ha! Uh, I think she's gonna have more of a substantial part. I thought she was gonna die early on. Um, because they kind of implied that a little bit, you know, uh, there were some scenes that were deleted and reshot after Malignant came out because it kind of conflicted with the way they were originally going to do the film, so they had to go back and reshoot it with Chris Jericho and all that stuff. Uh, well, he wasn't in the reshoots, but, um, I think she's going to have a bigger part. I think she's going to go from Final Girl to full-on killer. I, I have yet to see the, uh, little pale face girl in here, so I don't know if she's going to be the main sidekick. Perhaps the main sidekick is going to be, uh, this lady with her glowing eye instead, which I'd be totally down to see because I feel like she has more of an arc, more of a thing that she can deliver on, and I hope they flush it out. Aren't the clown with the chainsaw is fucking rad, by the way. Bravo! Like, we've paid homage to uh, a lot of these different franchises like Psycho, uh, Freddy, or, uh, Pennywise. Now we're doing a little Texas Chainsaw, a little Leatherface. I'm down for it. I, I, I love this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a full breakdown of this video and I'm gonna go frame by frame. This is just my reaction. No, this isn't over. I have to go back to the Terrifier. Still buried there, isn't it? Might be the only thing that can stop them. Chris Jericho! <laughs> He's wearing his head! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jericho's fucked. I mean, he's dead um, at the asylum. I love that she's going back to the Terrifier. I, I think she's going back to hell. I think that might be the fourth movie. I think she's going to have to jump into that fucking hole in the ground and go straight to hell and go kill Art for good. Um, but I love, I love the, I've got a, I'm going back to the start. I love it. I love that she's going back into it. Um, I, and my God. These movies work because they're funny. If it was just a clown killing people, people wouldn't give a shit. It'd be, it'd be dull. It, 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 you know, it'd be, uh, uh, what, what is it? Um, those, those, those terrible, um, movies that, uh, Eli Roth made. Uh, but, but this is better, uh, because he's funny. The fact that he's on a subway wearing his head on somebody else is hysterical. Um, I don't know whose body that is, but we'll do a breakdown. And now we're at, um, let's take a look at this. It looks like we're at a frat house, or a sorority house. It's giving me a lot of, um, Black Christmas vibes. I dig that. I love, uh, see, I love this franchise because Damien Leone is a fan of 80s horror movies. The guy does his own practical effects, he directs everything. It is the heart and soul of, of an, of an artist. It is not a corporate bullshit thing of 10 people in a boardroom going, it needs to be this, this, and this, and one dickhead being like, you need to change that because it's not very good. This is a man's vision, and it doesn't play by any rules, and it's a good time, and there's something to be said about that because it's an anomaly. Art the Clown, this franchise, like it or not, it's an anomaly, it's disgusting, it's funny, it's great. Let's keep going. Also, I think we're getting some of those demons back from All Hallows Eve and the Terrifier. I think Damien always wanted to do those characters justice, um, and he does in All Hallows Eve, but I think he always wanted to do a bigger scale of that, you know, with more money behind it. I think he, in the in the DVD commentary talking about the uh, characters, he, he talks about how it was kind of like a rush job, he didn't have the money, it was a very indie type of thing. I think now that we're doing this, he's got a little bit more money, and he's going to put some more uh, uh, high-end practical effects into some of these demons, and who doesn't love practical effects? I mean, if anybody watching this, if, if you're a fan of the movie Krampus, with all those little demon things that come out that are kind of funny, kind of like kind of like a, a more R-rated uh, gremlin, if you will, I think this is going to be your bread and butter. Still buried there, isn't it? Might be the only thing that could stop them. Okay, so he says, it's still buried there, isn't it? And she says it might be the only thing that could stop them. I imagine we're talking about the sword. I, I don't know where the sword is. I don't know if she left with it. But I can't imagine anything else that she would think, hey, let me go back and get it. I think she's going to go get the sword. Again, I think chapter four is going to be the real fucking showdown. I think part three is going to be um, a prelude to that. And it's going to be a lot, of, a lot of despair for Sienna, I hate to say. And I think part four is going to be the real final chapter. Um, if you watch any trilogy... You know, it kind of has like a similar pacing to it. 
uh, and like I said, I view this as like two, three, four, not one, two, three. One, one is a good uh, proof of concept. It's a good prologue. It's a good setting the stage. But considering Sienna shows up in part two, I look at two, three, four as a real trilogy, a real character arc. You can look at the um, any type of story structure, like uh, like Dan Harmon has a really great one. Um, the guys from South Park have a really good way of doing story structure. If we all look those up. But I, I think what's going to happen is that she's going to go back, get the sword. I think Jonathan's going to be killed, or at least somebody in her family is going to drive the stakes up, something to pull her out of the hero's journey and into the hero's journey. Um, that made no sense. Pull her out of her normal life and into the hero's journey. And uh, I think I think this one's going to be a lot of trolling from Art the Clown, and part four is going to be the real showdown. To which, in my humble opinion, they're both going to die. The only way you can cancel out one is to cancel out the other. So I think, yeah. And you know what? If I had to guess, Jonathan's going to come back as like a as a, a spirit or a ghost or some type of... He's going to be dead, but his spirit's going to come back. Because if, if you can have undead characters coming back from evil, you can have them coming back from the light side too. It's very Obi-Wan Kenobi. You've seen it across the board. That's what I imagine. He's going to die in this one, but part four is going to come back and be like, hey, here's the advice or the motivation you need. Uh, we have the blonde, which kind of reminds me of, like, the dumb blonde from, uh, Cabin in the Woods. You know the type in these horror movies. The dumb one. The dumb, kind of slutty one who, like, has a case of the fuck arounds, and she's gonna get a case of the find out. This looks like it's right before the shower scene. It looks like, hey, come follow me into the shower, and then we're gonna get chalk chalked up to, uh, pieces with a, with a chainsaw. Nope. Yeah, Art the Clown sitting in that wheelchair is very Black Christmas. A, yeah, I mean, just, just look at that. We got a reference to The Shining. Here's Johnny! Looking forward to the best Christmas ever, filled with fun, smiles, and laughter. Christmas comes early. Fuck them kids! <laughs> October 11th, so yeah guys, I mean, what's not to like? It's, it's Art the Clown, he's coming back, it's very much Black Christmas, right? It's so Black Christmas, I got it. where is it? Right? Black Christmas. If you haven't seen it, it's from the late 70s, or what year is it? 74, 76? I forget. It's a late 70s movie. It's a very underrated movie. It's got some great comedy to it, and it's kind of the first of its kind. It's got, like, uh, Billy the Killer, and uh, yeah, I, I see a lot of inspiration from that, from this. So if you want to get ready for this movie, go check out Black Christmas. Uh, it's clearly what he's taking notes from. Um, another one he's taking notes from is uh, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I personally like Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Dos. Um, it's way funnier, unintentionally so. I've got a present for you! <laughs> ah, oh, there you are! Uh, the first one's a little bit more straightforward. and uh, But yeah, this looks fantastic, guys. I can't wait for this movie to come out. I'll be there on opening day. If I can get an early screener, if I can get an early press release or what have you... If I can see this movie early, if there's a way to do it, I'll do it. I think they sent me a screener for the first, for the second movie when it came out, maybe um, a week or two before it came out. So if I can get a, my hands on that, I'll definitely see if I can do that for you guys, because I know you guys love Terrifier. I've got all these videos, and they're easily the most viewed videos, the most commented videos, they're the most fun to talk about. I think partly because I get really passionate about it, because there's all this lore and things to discover behind the scenes. And um, it's kind of funny, though, because like despite having so much lore to it, um, it never gets boring or predictable because Art the Clown has a way of just being like, nope, uh, Damien Leone doesn't play by the rules and neither, neither does Art. And that's why everybody loves this franchise. It's why I love this franchise. But comment down below, guys. What did you think of the new trailer for Terrifier 3? Are you going to go check it out? Uh, do you have any theories? Do you think Art the Clown killed Santa Claus? Feels that way, doesn't it? And it seems like he's going to kill a whole lot of kids. And the words of Kenny Powers, fuck them kids. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's great. I, I I think people need to calm the hell down. They get a little too up in arms about how, uh, oh my god, you killed a child. Fictional characters. Fictional characters. Grow up.
And this just looks fantastic. I, I'm going to watch this again. We're going to be putting out a, um, a breakdown of this video very soon. This was just my quick off-the-cuff reactions, but I'm going to go frame by frame and pull out all the little nuggets that you guys seem to love so much. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. I have been John here on Burns Reviews. You just got burned. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs>